Hi, I'm Jessica Blackler, the founder of Jacka Black. Hi, and I'm Campbell Canford, and I'm a transgender model. Today I'm going to be showing you our pride collection and using our base products from Jacka Black. So the first product I'm going to use is the Cracks Conceal in shade medium 2.0. I'm going to go in with the colour corrector under the eyes and then I'm going to use the concealer on top. The reason I started Jack and Black was because I was a makeup artist in film and TV and one of my friends was going through the transition um, and I noticed that they needed help with their makeup so I decided to offer makeup lessons for people um, kind of wanting to experiment with makeup and then it kind of took off and I decided that actually clients felt very overlooked by the beauty industry and the fact that products weren't there to offer solutions for what they needed, such as beard shadow coverage, um, feminising the face, eyebrows, etc, etc. Jacka Black is a gender-free makeup brand, so what we mean by that is that we completely overlook gender as a whole and we concentrate more on individuality and beauty, and our products offer solutions, so whether you're wanting to cover your acne, um, scarring, be a shadow, we kind of take it all into consideration. So now I'm going to use the Sculpts and Soften palette, which is effectively a contour palette. The Sculpts and Soften palette is in collaboration with Joseph Howard, who is a non-binary uh, blogger. Um, and we have created a manual that comes with the products. It's 32 pages long, and it talks to you about how to contour for your own needs. And the reason why is because Clients and customers used to be confused by the buzzword of contouring and we were um, wanting to make it easier for them. So we created a product that's creamy textured and you can build it up um, and also the manual which helps you create the, the look that you want. Yeah, like, I find this product, like I've used this product before and I find it quite good for like obviously, obviously like sculpting the face. Yeah. Because when I first started transitioning I used to watch on like YouTube on how to like tips and tricks on kind of like how to feminize your face yeah so i feel like this is like perfect for that and it has that like it's in a palette so you can just use it as once and yeah. that's all you need and i also think that there's not a, like a lot of education out there about how to contour when you want to feminize your face it's yeah, more about the generic and that's the kind of problem that we're solving is having those conversations that are normally mm -hmm. not that completely overlooked or just aren't discussed um that much um, and there's some amazing people out there that are discussing it. Um, but as yeah. a brand, I think there needs to be more brands that do yeah. discuss the. That's why it's it's good that it comes with the money to like show you properly how to do it. Like as you said, that like there's no kind of like no brands really, or there's yeah. like many out there that will show you how to like feminize your face if you're no. transgender. No, yeah. I'm just gonna be doing kind of soft sculpting today. So the history of, um, I guess, makeup for trans people is the fact that loads of my clients felt that they would go into a store or online and because of the lack of education, they'd always shy away from the beauty like side of things. Um, so they'd end up going into a store and pretending they were purchasing makeup on behalf of someone else, like a wife or mm -hmm. um, sister. And that made them nervous about them going home and trying to do it themselves. Um, so they kind of used to come to me and, and I'd have them like put the makeup on, but also explain the techniques, mm -hmm. um, do the makeup lessons bespoke to their needs. Mm -hmm. And I think since I offered these makeup lessons, we started about four years ago, the industry as a whole has become a lot more open and accepting, which is great and inclusive loads of different ways mm -hmm. but um there's still so much that needs to be yeah needs to be done. yeah i think a lot more people are more aware of transgender people out there now so i feel like there, there's probably a lot more knowledge when people you know that do work at like makeup counters to help transgender yeah. people because like i said like when when i used to go to like these counters i used to actually pretend it's for my sister did you find it was quite an important part like makeup in general was it quite an important part to get right for you because those of my clients would get really worried about doing it wrong and then like drawing more attention yeah i definitely i definitely when i first started like doing my makeup i used to think just as the more you put on the more feminine i would look but it was like completely the opposite 
Yeah. And I feel like yeah. I learn yeah. like less is actually more. Yeah, yeah. And like you don't need loads and loads of makeup no. to make yourself look feminine. No, it's not more at just all. about like using things like natural just to show what you've already got and just feminizing that. Yeah, yeah. Because when I I was like fourteen when I started wearing makeup and I obviously couldn't afford it then. Yeah. So I just used to find anything I could and just try to replicate what I saw on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely would say it was like a massive part of yeah, because lots of my, my friends transition, yeah. were like started to transition later on um, in their lives, mm -hmm. like you know, middle age and stuff, and they found that then, like for those clients, it was really important because um, they'd find it harder kind of to get to grips with something that they yeah. hadn't done for the for their whole life. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. But you learn at an age where most people do, like fourteen is probably yeah. most people would start with makeup for the first time. Um, so the education part for those that are like have gone their whole lives without doing it yeah. is an important aspect. Yeah, I feel like YouTube was definitely my yeah. tool, and that's why I think it's good. Like the you know, product includes things like manuals and like proper yeah. like tutorials, so people don't need to necessarily just yeah, look on YouTube. Yeah, they yeah. can just buy the product and find out like yeah. it's right in front of them. So the products themselves are vegan and cruelty free, and as an indie new makeup brand, we wanted to have the correct values and um, offer solutions and a product that customers are now demanding. Um, a high percentage of our customer base are those who are environmentally conscious and demanding a high quality product um, that has the right values. It's important to me as a founder to have to be vegan and cruelty free and it's also important to our customers. We are launching our Pride collection, which is a four-piece lipstick collection in collaboration with Switchboard, the LGBT charity. And our Pride collection is the four lipsticks that are matte and long-lasting. And the shades are Play Nude, Life on the Rainbow, You Are You and Queen. So this is the holographic packaging that the lipsticks are packaged in. And this is the shade Queen, which is a coral shade. I'm going to put this on Campbell. So it's very matte and long lasting, which is important when we asked our customers what they wanted because people don't like to reapply. Um, but also those who are new to makeup don't like the feeling, well actually I don't like the feeling either, of lipstick on the lips. It feels really soft on the lips, it actually doesn't feel like you're wearing anything. Yeah, it feels it's like, nice. It feels yeah, just it's like, it literally doesn't like feel like I'm wearing nothing. Yeah, so that's the Queen lipstick from our Pride collection. I think Pride is such an important thing for me and so many transgender people is because I feel like brands especially have come such a long way yeah. in sh um, celebrating it I would say. Mm -hmm. When I was younger I remember, I can't remember any brands that would celebrate pride or no. anything like that. So I feel like for the younger generation now to see so many brands out there, you know, putting rainbows in their, um, in their logos or in including transgender models or mm -hmm. LGBT models. Yeah. I feel like it's such a, an amazing thing because when I was younger, if I saw that, I feel like I would feel so inspired. Yeah. Whereas when I was younger, I feel like there was none of that. Yeah, so the I, education yeah. side of it is really good because it needs to, the awareness needs to be set in exactly. pride, but also all year round. And I think from mm -hmm. a brand perspective, you need to do it authentically. And that, although it's fantastic to feature pride in your um, calendar as a brand, I guess, you need to make sure that all year round you are supporting the LGBTQ community in-house mm -hmm. and as a brand, but also as, as, as customer base. And um, that's where brands need to still grow that yeah. area, I think, because Pride, like I said, it's, a, it's an amazing month or um, summer because it goes on mm -hmm. kind of all summer long, but it also is um, got a huge meaning behind it and it's mm -hmm. something that happens 
and is part of people's lives all yeah. year round. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's why I love like that your brand is like donating like yeah. one pound to yeah. switchable palette sticks. I think that's like really good, and I think brands should kind of like follow in those footsteps of like actually like contributing. Yeah. Um, back to the yeah, community. Yeah, back to the community. Yeah. Yeah, because lots of and you need to make sure that when you're shooting pride collections that like we mm. discussed earlier really yeah, on camera, yeah. you need to be using people and models and representatives that are actually in the community yeah. themselves. Thank you for watching our mini tutorial and we hope you love the new Pride collection.